What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be taking you all on a journey of how I turned negative $1,500 into $100,000 by age 20, all while being a full-time student. So no, I'm not a college dropout. So before I get into my journey, I do want to ask you all to just smash that like button because it does in fact help the algorithm as Mr. Beast says. So to give you all a bit about my background, I do come from a lower middle class family. Now I'm not dirt poor, all right? I'm not from the mud. I don't claim to be from the mud or anything like that. But my family was on the lower middle class. Like I remember we never wasted money, okay? My dad, he worked at an airport taxi service. My mom worked, well, my mom was actually a housewife for most of her life, but she did start working at a, a school cafeteria. So the income my family was making was again, like very little money. But as a result, uh, we definitely couldn't, you know, spend money on products that were the nicest. Like right? I couldn't get the, the Jordans or the new latest Nike air running shoes. But we had like a humble lifestyle. We live in an apartment, they moved to a house, you know, mortgage bills, uh, uh, necessities. That's where all the money went to every single like bi week check. So money was tight. Money was always tight in the household. And that definitely made me um, start to have that mindset of, you know what, when I grow up, I wanna make sure I'm financially free, I'm financially independent, so I can take care of my family, I can take care of myself, and I can take care of my loved ones without having to worry about putting a dent in my own wallet. So when I was 16, I started getting that that bug that I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of people who end up becoming rich start to get, which is I wanna make sure when I'm older or like three, four, five, six years from now, I want to make sure I'm in a financially good spot. At 16, I feel like you can only do so much, especially when I was 16, which was like, what, uh, five, four years ago, right? It's not like TikTok was there where you can just um, make millions off of that or drop shipping wasn't as hot. But one thing my uncle had always told me was when he was younger, he wished that he dove more into stocks because now he's like too scared. But when he was younger, he would have the courage to do it. And he told, he always tell me, yo, you should really look into stocks. So when I was 16, I, I started a TD Ameritrade account and I was like, you know what? Let me jump into it. And I heard so many stories of people like becoming millionaires off stock trading. Oh, we went to zero. And I was like, shit, I'm about to become the next Warren Buffet, next Wolf of Wall Street, sign me up. So again, I had no money to my name. I never worked a nine to five job, nothing like that. No after school job either. Uh, the only thing I did do was I did well in school. I got good grades. So my parents did have a good level of trust in me for the most part, especially my dad. So to start my stock trading journey, I actually asked my dad, if he could lend me $1,500. And at, like, at 16, my mom was like, hell no, there's no way I'm about to allow your dad to give you $1,500. Like, like you're gonna lose it all. Cause again, my parents did not trust the stock market, thought it was a big gambling show, which a lot of people still think it is. Oh, it kinda is sometimes. But after a lot of convincing my dad, he trusted me. He was like, you know what? Um, I know you can do it. I know you can excel. You excel what you do in school. You excel in sports, so why not? Let me let me give you fifteen hundred dollars, and it won't be the end of the world even if you lose it all. So flash forward like a month and a half, uh, I lost it all, and I was like, "Shit, I'm about to become the next dude. Warren Buffet, next Wolf of Wall Street." Sign me up. Ooh, you know, moms like when they're right, they'll make sure you know that they're right. She was like, why did you ever expect you could double the money in the stock market? One of the dumbest things you've ever decided to do. And yeah, like I was not getting another borrow lending of $1,500 probably ever again in my life. But despite going negative $1,500 to my name, I did learn a very valuable lesson at that age. And that was being rich wasn't going to happen overnight, not over a month, maybe not even a year. It's going to take some time. Retrospectively, I'm actually glad that I did end up losing that $1,500 because one, it put like a mindset in my head that, you know what, I gotta get this money back because it's not mine, technically it was my dad's. And in the Indian household, at least, like family money's considered family money. So whether it's your mom, your dad, your sisters, your like yours, it's all the same uh, money, right? All from the same entity. But regardless, like in terms of my like intrinsic feelings, I was like, nah, I gotta, I gotta get this money back because it's on me that I lost it. And I also knew that I was about to get any other money from my family. So I had to somehow basically set up a business with virtually no cost. And this idea of like a zero cost product or zero cost service is something that I would touch later in the video, but it is one of the most powerful things that I think I learned at that moment, but that I didn't even realize I learned. So the summer heading into my junior year, this is when I'm 17 years old. Uh, my friend and I actually, we were big, you know, anime enthusiasts. 
and we would see these anime clips and like TV show clips on YouTube. And every time we would click them, we would see ads being played on them. And at the time for YouTube, all you had to do was to get 10,000 views in order to get monetized. And the overall monetization process was very quick. YouTube was not strict at all in like terms of its, um, its uh, guidelines. So people were literally making money posting unoriginal content, like clips from TV shows or animes. And then my friend and I were like, yo, like we see, we see these anime clips of shows that we watch on the daily. Why not post these clips as well? And that's literally what we did. So then from June to August, all we did was post anime clips, theory videos, and like these texting stories, which is like this app where you can like fake a column between two people. And I basically fake columns between two characters of an anime. It was, it was pretty funny, honestly. It was kind of creative looking back at it. And I'll tell you guys right now, starting a YouTube channel, no matter what niche it is, the beginning is the hardest part. Like we were getting two, three, max 10 views a video. And it was so discouraging because yes, again, unoriginal content, you don't really have to put too much work in posting videos, but it still took a lot of time, like getting a video, you know, reposting it. Yeah, it just took a lot of time. And I personally was like, bro. And my friend who actually just signed up to for a job at Hollister, he dipped, right? Uh, the first month we were monetized, we made $2.00. 98 cents i won't ever forget that so my friend left and it was basically on me to like keep going with the channel luckily probably a month after that he left uh, one of the videos that we posted that i posted way back towards the start of this uh, new youtube channel um blew up it got like 150 000 views we got a load of subscribers and all of a sudden that two dollars 98 cents the next month it became 160 dollars the following month became 250 dollars and that's you know at one point, I was earning like $800 to $900 a month. And I was like, whoa, this is this is getting really crazy now. And then by the end of like this, this stint with this anime channel, posting clips for like six, seven months, I had made around $10,000. I remember when I got my first two paychecks, which is the $160 one and the $250 one, I actually bought my mom and Michael Kors and Coach Purse because when I was younger, she would always rave about having these nice purses like Coach Purses when in the future, hopefully I'm rich, my sister's rich. And I was like, obviously I'm not rich right now, but this would be, you know, I could finally like give something back to my mom after all these years of her taking care of me. And I did, and she was really happy. And then obviously I also gave my dad $1,500 because, you know, flash forward like a month and a half, uh, I lost it all. <laughs> Yikes. So now after this stint with this anime channel, I realized my true goal, which is also why I stopped posting on the anime channel, which was that yes, I want to make a lot of money, but I also want to be able to have a lot of influence to the point where if I say something or I do something, then people will actually listen. Like for example, Elon Musk, if he says something, people will pay attention, people will listen. And I just wanted to have that ability because I feel like I could change the world. And this sounds so corny, but that is true. So I knew that I wasn't about to have any influence by posting these anime clips, right? So I had to switch my YouTube channel and do something more big, something more meaningful. And at the time, I knew that educational and finance channels had the highest CPM of any other YouTube channels. So I began a new YouTube channel and I called it RV Business. And at first I, I would post like financial videos about the like stock market based on what I learned from two years ago or a year ago. Oh, it went to zero. Um, those didn't do too hot. I didn't really get enough views on those. So one day I decided to post a SAT video where I complete this SAT math non-calc section in like five minutes. And then after about like three months, that sh shit went viral. Like it got 1.2 million views, maybe even more now. And all of a sudden my YouTube channel went from like, like 100 to 200 subs to 13,000 subs. So once I saw this huge increase in following, I was like, all right, I got to grind. I'm not going to stop uploading. I'm about to upload every single day or every other day. And that's exactly what I did. One, two uploads a day, sometimes even three. I was making 1.5K to 3.5K a month off AdSense. And plus sponsorships, I was making like another 2K. So I was any earning anywhere from 5K to 6K a month. Like I was crushing every other YouTube channel that talked about SAT content. Like I was the guy. People were asking for tutoring, assistance, everything. I, at one point, I think I tutored over like 20 students in a month. And I started getting so many requests that I even started a tutoring company, Smart Minds Tutoring, link in the description below, where if I had too many students, I would refer them to Smart Minds Tutoring instead because it was just a lot of students to handle. And I knew that a business is a better thing longer term because you can scale it and you can grow it. Through private tutoring, I was charging people anywhere from like 45 to $60 an hour for one-on-one -on -one sessions. And then if it was a group uh, tutoring session, I would charge them 40 an hour. And I would have three to four kids in one group charge paying $40 an hour and I would host it for like two hours. So I was earning $80 per head. And sometimes I even have five people. So I was earning 
$360 per two hours or $400 per two hours. And that was a lot of money. Now, one thing you guys might be asking is, well, you're making a lot of money tutoring and you know AdSense and sponsorships, but how about your tutoring company, right? A company should probably bring you the most profit. Well, to this day, and this is 2021, uh, 2022, and I started my company in 2019, I have made zero dollars off of my company. Every single dollar that the company has made has been reinvested into the company to make sure it can continue growing and continuing um, multiplying in terms of uh, students being tutored, uh, tutors, revenue, etc. I also realized how important having a social media following really is. You see, for any company or any venture, marketing becomes the ride or die for that venture. If the marketing isn't good, no matter how good that product is, it will not reach the people. If the marketing is really, really good, then even if the product is bad, a lot of people will still end up buying it. And this is where I started remembering the idea of the zero cost product. You see, in 2020 when COVID hit, I spent a lot of time watching like lectures and listening to other people talk, people who have made it in life, who at least I look at them like, wow, and they have a bunch of money to their name, huge success, large following, everything. And one of the speakers, this is someone my mom showed me, was actually an Indian speaker. His name was Sandeep Maheshwari. And he had a lecture where he talked about how to start a business with virtually no money. This lecture changed my life forever. So once I developed a pretty noticeable following, about like 20,000 followers on YouTube, I was like, all right, now Sandeep Mashwari and all these other speakers talked about how you can leverage your audience that you already have to sell a product, right? And that is, that's the business side of YouTube that a lot of people don't see. So I was like, all right, what is a product that I can sell? And while I did have uh, enough money to my name where I could hire an editor, hire a you know, thumbnail designer for my videos, I was like, um, how, what should I create that's a zero cost product? Like I was still thinking of a product that costs virtually no money, even though I had money where I probably could, you know, I could utilize to actually develop a cool product. And that's what I realized whenever I study for an exam, SAT or any exam, I would always develop a note guide as I studied so that I can review the note guide every single night before the exam and on exam day. So then I was like, let me create SAT notes, like, which is basically the notes that I create from my SAT exam and just write them on like a digital platform and make it look nice and neat and pretty and sell it to people. And that costs no money. The only thing it costs is time. And yes, time is money, but at the same time, this is like zero dollars, right? So I developed this note sheet with help of a friend and next thing you know, we were able to sell over a thousand units, right? At a price of 20 bucks. So that was mind blowing. I was like, wow. It's pretty crazy because you would think study notes wouldn't you know, make you that much money, but it, like you have to realize people are lazy, right? At the end of the day, people are lazy and they look at ways to improve their life without putting without putting in as little work as possible. And if you're able to assist in that and facilitate that process, that want, that desire, then you can make a lot of money. And I know people would hate developing a study guide for the SAT, but if you're able to put that time in and do it, which is what I did, and you have to sell to the people who obviously don't want to do the same thing, then not only do they benefit and now they're able to raise your score and study something that's already made, but you're obviously pocketing money and you're able to grow your own financial standings. This is where luck and perfect timing comes in because as I was looking for the next big thing, the next thing to do that was probably really aside from YouTube, not in the YouTube space, my friend who's in the reselling slash botting business actually came to me, my friend Sam, and asked us to create a bot for him. For quick clarification, a bot is a software tool that allows you to buy products at an extremely fast rate, and that way you are able to buy even the highest in-demand items, such as PS5, sneakers, the moment they drop. Now, when my friend came to me, my friend Sam, we were like, bro, this is like a really big project. Like, you guys, creating a bot is a real world application. At this point, I'm a college student, computer science major, so the only co coding stuff I really did was create school projects, right, and assignments. I never created anything real world that real users would actually use. I would say me and him spent over 100 hours easily each coding, researching, understanding topics that we were never taught in school at this point, like multi-threading, polymorphism, like a high scale, uh, scaling, AWS, and a bunch of other stuff. At, like at this point, we were real software engineers. And one thing you have to consider is we're students at this time and we're not making any money by coding this bot right now. The, the whole idea was us three would come together, he would market it, we would code it, and he would split all the profits once the bot was in production and people were using our software tool. Now, unfortunately, it is like tragic to say after like five to six months of work, our bot was pretty good. We did release it to like the public and we had 300 users and we capped it at that um, count. That way our software was still exclusive or right? not everyone could have it, which would help raise the price in the future. But the bot was being used 
It checked out over like 300 PS5s, and the PS5 was the hottest item at this time. It checked out sneakers, it checked out, uh, I think like the Bad Bunny Crocs, it checked out a lot of cool stuff, and it was beating other bots in the market. And we were like, yo, this is amazing. Like something that we built is used, being used by real people, and they're happy with it. And they were, they really spent over a thousand dollars on it, but the bot was in beta, right? So it was free at this time. So then when we decided to go to alpha and actually make the bot uh, pay for it, people could only use it if they bought it, right? Not like a secret access. The website which we supported, which was Walmart, changed its entire like look and changed its backend, its security, everything. So our bot no longer worked. And as a result, users dropped it and it really didn't go anywhere. And we made zero dollars. So you guys might be looking at me like, damn, you really spent five to six months working on something and made nothing off of it. Well, the one thing I will say is that the amount of experience, the amount my abilities as a programmer like increased is second to none, literally invaluable. I, I felt after that, I could create any project no matter what it was. And that confidence helped me a ton in the coming like months. So after I basically <laughs> took a break from the bot market and went back to YouTube, I realized, you know what? I haven't seen a lot of bot videos on YouTube. Like, I haven't seen the YouTube market and the bot market coming together so I was like, let me you know, make that come together. So I decided to post a video where I teach the general public how to create a very basic bot. And the video went viral. And next thing you know, a bunch of people were requesting me to make bots for them for various sites like wine sites, golfing sites, uh, shoe sites, uh, GameStop, Walmart, and other like in the cut sites that I never even heard about. And with these requests, I was like, this is similar to when my SAT channel blew up and I was getting tons of tutoring requests. I was like, you know what? I can start another big business out of this. Eventually clients who would come to me, I would start charging them hourly. Like, I was like, okay, if you want me to create a bot for this site, I'm going to charge you hundred dollars an hour. And you guys might be like, whoa, 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 that's a lot of money. I personally never knew how much money was in the software field until I saw it first handed. I remember I charged the first person that ever came to me like $55 an hour. I, I said, I'll tutor you on how to create a bot. And then he's like, you know what, forget that. I'll just double your rate and pay you once in an hour. In fact, that's pretty standard from what I've seen. And I was like, whoa, that's standard? That That's standard? And at that point, I was like, all right, I know exactly what to do. So everyone came to me from that point on, I would charge them minimum 120 an hour to create a bot for them. And that was probably the most lucrative like venture I ever had at that time. I was able to increase my rate from like once an hour to 120 to 150 to $200 an hour for certain clients. So while I'm making like 2K off this customer, 3K off this customer, 2.5K off this customer, I realized that once I'm done with the customer and I create the software, they're able to use it multiple times because it's reusable and they're able to get so many products, resell it and make so much money off of it and all they needed me for was that initial setup, right? That creating that initial software for them. And I was like, damn, that's it. Like, I'm not getting any more revenue off of these clients. And that's where the idea of the recurring revenue model came in my head. I was like, how can I keep these customers for long term? How can I keep them so once I make the bot, they need me. And even after that, they still need me. And that's when I was like, you know what? What I can do is I can charge them like a subscription service in order to have the program and keep it being updated so it could be the fastest possible. I would charge you like $500, $500 or 1.5K a month, depending on the site, depending on how hard it was. So that way it's like a monthly subscription. So when you stop paying, no more bot for you. But as long as you keep paying, then you will keep getting the bot, keep getting my services, etc. And this recurring revenue model proved to be much more financially rewarding. And this is a key lesson I want you all to like understand is the idea of using multiple models, uh, multiple business models, like seeing what works. Certain things, like a one time is way better, while certain things recurring is way better. After a certain point, I did start getting a lot of clients to the point where I couldn't handle all of them. So I did hire like another uh, person help me and we would split 50-50. And while yeah, it's good to keep as much money as possible and you don't want to split 50-50 for like a lot of reasons, I was like, well, if I have five clients and I want a sixth client and I personally can't handle that sixth client, why not just hire a coworker and we can split 50-50 on a sixth client, right? Because it's better than not having a sixth client earning zero money versus having a coworker help you, having a sixth client and earning 
50% of whatever revenue that guy brings. And this is something that you just gotta learn in business is that you're gonna need help, right? Like no matter how cool you think you are, how capable you think you are, you cannot do it by yourself. My YouTube channel would not be where it's at if I didn't have my editor, my multiple editors actually, my thumbnail designer, my bot business wouldn't have been where it was if I hadn't had that coworker who helped me with that client and multiple clients who came after. You have to have help, even Elon Musk needs help, right? No one can do it all by themselves, no matter who you are. So now this bot venture was what eventually helped me cross the 100K mark. And I was 20 at this time. And this was actually of summer 2021. So the video, you guys are now probably watching it in like May or June 2022. And you guys might be like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a whole like year later. I didn't create this video before because I was like, I feel like it'll come off as very cocky, very arrogant. Um, yeah, I just I was just second doubting myself, but then I was like, you know what? Hopefully, the people who watch this video actually take away of uh, good, valuable advice from it versus looking at it in a negative light. So I'm actually 21 at this time. I, yeah, I'm sorry, you guys can yell at me, but I was 20 when I crossed 100k because I my birthday is February 16th, so I turned 21 this year. You guys probably like, hey, yo, this man was lying to us the whole time. No, no I wasn't. And that is my journey. And before I end this video, one thing I would like to say is a lot of people probably think, you know. Doing this, all this, having these side hustles at a young age makes you not able, be able to live your life to the fullest. And I think that's super wrong because you can go to parties, you can have fun, you can do so much with your friends, your family, your college life, your student life while having these side hustles, while making six figures. Right? At the end of the day, if you have that goal of being financially independent, being in a position where you can help anyone, where you can help your family, make sure they never work a day in their life, help yourself so like you don't ever have to worry about your personal financial situation. Um, and then obviously for myself, I know in the future, when I'm older, I wanna have a wife, I wanna have kids. I wanna make sure my, I'm able to give my kids everything they want like Aww. without any financial like hardship. My wife, if she doesn't wanna work anymore, it wouldn't matter to me because I'll be able to make enough money to a point where it, like, it does not matter, right? Whether she works or she doesn't work, that should be her choice. That's the position I wanna be at. Right, and I feel like with that goal, with that mindset, you almost have to start early. You have to start young, and you have to start preparing yourself for the future. And that is why you know I'm on this journey, and hopefully this inspires you all to begin your journey or continue your journey if you've already started. Thank you all for watching. Peace.